What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the RTG career mode. This is episode number 26 and today we return with the final game of season 2. It is the final game of the La Liga campaign where we go for our revenge on Atletico Madrid who of course we lost the Copa del Rey final to a couple of episodes ago knowing that a win might be required for us to guarantee a European place. But for Atletico Madrid, they also have something on the line themselves. They need at least a point and possibly all three themselves as well to qualify for a top four place. So both teams with lots on the line here at the Estadio La Rosa later. And again, we are in sixth, we are in pole position. So a win does guarantee a sixth place finish. Can't finish fifth, of course, but Batiste have got Real Madrid at home. I can't see them winning that one, even though Real Madrid are locked in second place. So... We should be able to finish above Batiste no matter what. We're in order to get sixth, which is the Europa Conference League spot. Espanyol, who have got Mallorca away from home. I mean, I'll be honest here. They're safe. Got nothing to play for. I think they're going to win that, which means if Espanyol win, then we will need to get at least a point. And I think possibly a win ourselves as well. So, you know, a little bit nervous for it. But uh, heading into the game, uh, final game of the season. It's been a bit of an inconsistent run, really, in the second half of the campaign. I'm going to do this one live because it's too big of a game, man. And the last time we faced Atletico Madrid again, that cup, cup final where, I mean, let's be honest here, like, we should have won. Like, we should have won that game. I thought I played really, really well. Like, genuinely, I just didn't take my chances. I want to get my revenge today. And, um, yeah, I want you guys to witness my live reactions as well, if you will. Because I know that's very popular nowadays on YouTube. So, heading into the game, uh, my team is going to be as follows. Traore will start up top because, I'm sorry, but like I said in the last episode, like, Adama is just... I, even though it seems as though he'd be just as good playing here, like to me, where I've got the best out of him is in that centre forward slash striker role up top. He's been amazing. So Zanigo drops to the bench for Fran Valauba, but I will keep him on the bench. And I also put an El Akab on there as well. So I'll take him and Roberto around and put El Akab on there instead. And that'll do me. So, first and only game, it is indeed the final game of the season where, again, we might need to win in order to qualify for a European competition next season. Come on, Malaga. thinking what I might do for my next FIFA CM YouTube save is do it fully live. Like the, uh, the My Player and the Docs to Glory save as well because like I, listen like as, as an old school YouTuber I've been doing this for like what almost 12 years now you know like I I always preferred postcom personally but I understand that trends have changed and, and nowadays people much prefer live stuff so I think from the next one onwards it's going to be fully live. So I don't, I don't mind doing the games live, they are fun but um yeah, I, I think from the next one onwards, just to let you guys know, like, in advance, it's, uh, it probably will be a live one. And from there on out, I think until FIFA 24, I'll probably uh, keep it live. No, of course, it won't be FIFA 24. EASFC 24. Or would it, called it be a, would it be called EASFC 1? I don't know. I really don't know. Brilliant decision to drop Zaniga. Start Traore up top and Fran Villalba in behind. It is Fran with the goal. And Malaga have the lead. That was so funny, man. Like, three of our new signs this year all combining. First is Orgain, then Traore, and then Villalba. Malaga draw first blood. And they get a win. Guarantee safe. Come on. Munoz. To El Caruani. A chance for a quick fire double from Malaga. And a wit one in there. Oh, it was an awkward one for Jan or Black. And as Espanyol have just gone in front against Mallorca, we must hold on to this result. I mean, no, no disrespect to Mallorca. I've been there before. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, definitely going to be an Espanyol banker there with nothing for Mallorca to play for. It's going to be a, a simple win for Espanyol, I think. And that means we must win ourselves. A draw, I don't think, will be enough. A win is now mandatory. Go on, El Carani, keep going. Off you go, son, off you go. Traore! Oh, it's a rocket! A jammer Traore! My top scorer, 21st of the year, and it's a bullet! Oh, we 
We've lost a Copa del Rey final to Atletico 2 1. And we know about the attacking quality they possess. Griezmann, actually, for those curious, is the top scorer in this La Liga season. But today, we've kept him completely isolated and quiet. 45 minutes away from locking up a European spot in sixth place. Oh, careful. Careful. Save, Nunez. Good stop by our number one. Still 2-0, but a flare go. They're coming. They're coming. We kept them quiet in the first half, but you know in this second half they're going to be coming with intensity. And Nunez again blocks the shot and turns behind for a corner. Still 2-0, but it's all a flare go in the early stages, as I expected. It's a patter. Yes, well in Zor game. Do you know what? Like, what? What he does, you don't really see. Like, I, I talk about this a lot. There's, there's always like certain players who... In my saves, they'll never get the credit because they do the defensive work, which isn't really on cue. But Azul game breaks up so many attacks. As a box-to-box -box player, yeah, I would have liked a little bit more from him in terms of the stats on the offensive. Why well, can't I switch to it? There we go. Um, but to be fair, defensively, couldn't have asked much more. He's been so solid for me. Lovely dribbling there as well by the Algerian. And, oh! Flatico, need a goal ASAP. 15 minutes on the clock. We've, we've done well of tightening up after a tough start to the half. Felix tackled by Ahmed. And El Karouani has found a bit of space there. Now, Matt Doherty is not going to be able to catch up. El Karouani is away. And this could wrap it. Oh! Coming into this game, it was all about trying to get revenge. Safe to say we've done that. Because whilst I can't add to our two-goal lead, the goals in the first half confirmed that Malaga are going back to Europe. Had such a poor start to the season, but ever since I changed that formation, we were much better defensively. And in a game like this, where we needed to stay tight and deal with the top score in the league, we did just that. 2-0, and we wrap up sixth. Just shut the door on a flare coat, really. Like, we didn't really get him a clear sight of goal. And only two shots came early in the second half. And Nunez, to be fair, they were good saves. But they weren't they weren't what you'd call, like, you know, clear-cut chances. And for a goalkeeper that Nunez has been this season really solid and consistently good, you'd expect him to save those shots. So defensively, really, really solid. Ahmed has been a brilliant little um, promotion from the Youth Academy, locking down a first-team spot, but no doubt for man in the match. Once again, he's my player of the season. He set up the first, he scored the second, and Adama Traore is the main reason why we are going to... Well, it should be the Europa Conference League, but here's the thing. I I haven't played the Europa Conference League since its introduction to FIFA last year in FIFA 23. And I'm going to be honest here, I don't know if you... You must be able to play it, but I've, I've never been able to play it. Like, even though I've qualified for it at least, at the very, very least, two times, I've never been allowed to play it. It's always put me in the Europa League instead. So, yeah, we should be going into the Europa Conference League but it might well be the Europa League because I've never had the chance to play it. Every time, well I say every time, the two times I've qualified for it, the game's put me in the Europa League instead. But there it is, we do lock up sixth on the final day uh, in the end after Espanyol got themselves a win. We needed to get ourselves to win ourselves and we do. Uh, would a draw have been enough? I can't remember if our head-to-head -head record was better than Espanyol's or not. A draw might have been enough, but I can't remember now. But a win definitely was. And as Barcelona were champions, Real in second. Atletico still held on to fourth in the end with Villarreal behind them on the head-to-head -head record. They and Sevilla in the Champions League. Again, it should be Villarreal in the Europa League. And we should be in the Conference League. But again, take it with a pinch of salt. Because of the way the game has gone for me, it might be Europa League. I genuinely don't know. But 42 goals conceded in the season. The second best defensive record. The change of formation was such a brilliant decision after we shipped 10 goals in our first three games. Okay, we didn't score that many at 55. That was the joint lowest in the top 10. But can't argue with a sixth place finish. And Bill Bow did indeed go down in the end. Wow. Top scorer in La Liga was Antoine Griezmann. Traore did indeed in the end get into the top six, but not the top five after his goal on the final day. He was our only top scorer 
in the 25 top scorers lists. Uh, Vinicius won the assist title with 15. Zaniga, to be fair, at 12 this season with Flores and Traore in the top 10 themselves with 8 and 7. And Nunez, I think, did win the Golden Glove. He did indeed. Whoa, he smashed it. 15 clean sheets, 5 clear to Stegen and Dmitrievsky of Rayo Vallecano as well. The change of formation is the big reason why. That made massive difference to us this season. So I'm going to simulate through to the 2nd of June because the Champions League final, it's it actually it might be this weekend when the Champions League final is played. And we'll be able to see who did what. Are we getting those youth players? To, oh, I just can't be bothered to sort this out. Honestly, I wish you could talk to your youth players, man, seriously. But um, was Champions League this weekend or is it the next weekend? I think it's this weekend, actually. Um, yep, there we go. So the Champions League this year, for those curious, was won by Manchester City. Will we see it in real life? Well, they had a 1-1 one -one draw against Real Madrid, of course, last weekend at the Bernabeu. So, advantage Pep side uh, at the Etihad Stadium. They had to beat Manchester United in the final. Uh, the Europa League was won by dun -dun -dun, Bayern Munich, beating Leipzig in an all-German final there by two goals to nil as well. And as for the Conference League as well, well, again, we should be going into it next season. And this year it was won by Lazio, beating TSG Hoffenheim in an Italian versus Germany final. Cool. Excellent stuff. Nicely done. Obviously, you know, the Copa del Rey was won by Fleck and Madrid. We lost in the final to them. And the uh, the Super Cup was won by Liverpool. Oh, hang on. Where's the, where's the National League Super Cup was after? Where's the... Um, does it... What? Does the game not, like, have it as a competition you can view when it's not... I'm looking for the Spanish Super Cup. It's not there. So the game doesn't include it when you're not playing it. Is that how meaningless they consider it? That's, just, that's crazy. So I'll sort the Youth Academy stuff off camera because it will take a while to go through. But you know the best players right now are Antonio, Avia, Samir, Ibrahim. I, I, I know I've got three Samar Ibrahims, but uh, the Algerian <laughs> Samar Ibrahim is the best. We've got, we've got one Algerian and two Moroccan Samar Ibrahims. And two of them are... Actually, all three of them are really good. That's going to be a nightmare when you all get pro deals. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll sort this one out off camera and uh, just let you know who gets the deals and who gets released. And as for our final look at the squad then for this season. Uh, we'll take a look at the stats of the players here. Um, obviously, Reina, he's definitely going. <laughs> now down to 56 overall. But uh, Nunez only grew one rating, yet Gutierrez grew two. This is this is one thing about FIBA CM that really annoys me. It's kind of like potential at times. I know it can vary a little bit, but sometimes it needs to vary more. How can, how can Nunez, who had the Golden Glove this year, 15 clean sheets and 38, just 22 years old, only grow one rating to 74, and now seem to be done in his development. How? How does that work, EA? And yet Gutierrez has gone up by two. And to be fair, he was our cup goalkeeper and did well for us this year. But that makes literally no sense. EA needs to work on that, man. Seriously, it's just embarrassing. Uh, Nacho Fernandez did go down by two ratings this year, but was a key player for us coming in from Real Madrid in the free transfer, leading us to stability and European football. Uh, Carmona grew five ratings out on loan. I think and Dai's retiring, isn't he? Yeah, he's going at the end of the season. Gennaro will probably go at the end of the season as well. Uh, Caro didn't play much this year, only two ratings for the young centre-half. Ahmed out of the academy, though, shows great potential. I wouldn't be surprised if that goes up to exciting prospect for the new season. Five clean sheets in 14, and he got a goal in the Copa del Rey as well. Really solid player for me at centre-half as well. Santana still shows potential to be special, but he'll be loaned out to the Portuguese side of Ruka when the new trans window opens. Fresneda grew four ratings to 76 overall. I, I think next year I might start him as my starting wing back and drop Sacco to the bench. Whilst he did grow a rating and play really well for me, I want to prioritise the teenager who clearly is growing very nicely indeed. El Caruani, another solid season for our Dutch ball Moroccan left sided player, growing two ratings 75 overall, three assists and a goal in 29 La Liga games. I'm still getting a little bit better on that left hand side. Uh, Munoz, the captain, four goals and an assist in all competitions this year with 33 games played, but I think I will need to replace him next year if not as the captain or in the squad at least in the first 11 Zorgain though what a signing recommended uh, by someone to me um, five goals and five assists I appreciate the, uh, the recommendation I can't remember who it was that recommended it to me but thank you for that five goals and five assists and seven in seven nil competitions in 42 games and again defensively as well he just broke up so many attacks. Whilst I would have liked a little bit better on the offensive end, defensively I couldn't have asked much more. He was really, really solid for me and justifying that solid player trait. El Achab didn't play much this season after a great breakthrough year last season, so I think I'll try and loan him out next season. But Tony Flores, 
only grew to three ratings, which is really disappointing because 10 goals and 11 assists in 41 games, that's averaging a direct cr uh, contribution to a goal one, one in every two games. One direct contribution to a goal in every two games. For a 19-year-old in La Liga, that's really impressive. And yet, he only grew three ratings. Personally speaking, he should have an upgrade. I don't expect him to be potentially special next season, but he should. This is why I'm a big champion and a big believer that players should be able to get upgraded in the summer when you go into a new season. Flores, 74 overall with those stats. Absolutely not. Bump him up at least another three ratings, in my opinion. Fran Villalba, solid squad player for us this year, going two ratings to 75 overall. Not too sure how much better he can get, but he's still been a really, really handy squad player for us this year. Nacho Calderon out alone at Aruka, though, grew nine ratings. Really excited for when Nacho comes back with his fantastic physical stats. Adama Traore, no doubt about it, my player of the season. 21 goals in 37 games. My top scorer in both competitions, including five in six, and scored in the final against the Flair Madrid, I think, didn't I think he did. I think he's got that consolation goal. About 2 rate 79 overall. My player of the season. What a pickup and why I always say you need to check the free agents pool every single season. And as for Roberto, come out from loan, uh, scored three goals in 13 in La Liga. Not too bad for our third choice striker, Anzaniga. Eight goals and 14 assists as well. I did not expect that from Zaniga this year, but... He wasn't the goal scorer like he was last year, but he was the goal creator. 14 assists in all competitions and 12 in La Liga as well and 7 goals too. Fair play, a different kind of role for him this year. And whilst he was mainly used off the bench, he was still really good at setting the goals up if not scoring them himself. And as for the Segunda Division, well, Osasuna and Almeria heading back to La Liga and the playoffs. I can't check um, who's won them or what the scores are, but the playoffs will be contested by Las Palmas, Elche, Levante and Sporting Gijon as well. Wow, Deportivo Alaves fell off last season. They were like certs to go up with us. They made the playoffs this year. But uh, there you go. So those are the four teams in the playoffs. And Almeria and Osasuna are definitely heading back to La Liga. Right, guys. That will do it for today's episode and the season finale of the RTG Career Mode. If you've enjoyed it, then please do drop a like. Much love to you. will have a fantastic day. And we'll return with the brand new season where Malaga are going back into Europe. But the question is... Will it be Europa League or Europa Conference League? With FIFA career mode, you just never know. We're definitely going to Europe next season. Absolutely buzzing with that after turning around what was such a tough start to our debut year back in La Liga. Question is as well, where do we prove in the summer transfer window? Any transfer targets, let me know. We're still a three and a half star team. There will certainly become at least a four star in the summer. I'm thinking probably a new CM to replace the captain. And whilst our defence was so strong last year, maybe a new centre after to replace Juan Day as well. And possibly a new CAM, because Trey already definitely starting striker for us next year as well. Regardless, have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I will see you for the start of a new season. Season 3 at the Estadio Rosaleda, where Malaga are back in the European football competitions very soon.